Oh, I'm gonna stop at home. Oh my God, I'm telling you. Happy. I'm telling you. Okay. What is honestly wrong with you? Patrick will like this. I'm already here. You have to get the picture. I thought production was going to step in. I mean, this is one of those things that I legitimately thought there's no way on this set that I can't be the only one that's going to object to this. No one stopped me. I figured eh, it's really dangerous. Someone will stop me. I wasn't on set that day, but I'm telling you this much. If I was, she would have never walked out on that pool. Michelle Stouse from Selling Sunset. Hi, everybody. This is Adam DeVello, and I am the creator and executive producer of Selling Sunset. And this is Variety's Making a Scene. I mean, you don't get pools like this. No. I want to just go walk across that. OK, well, don't do that. <laughs> if I took my do heels that. off, I could do it. No. I can see every thought go through my head when I watch this, to this day, when I see this scene. Because there's the initial part where I'm like, she must be joking. Ha ha, no, you're not doing that. And then it gets to where it's like, oh my God, she might actually do this. The absolute terror in Chriselle's face is what makes the scene for me. Because Chriselle's like, are you really doing this right now? Like, is this really happening? If I take the picture where you get all oh, I will get off. I will oh get off. Oh my God. You do oh my God. I can't believe you just did that. What is wrong with you? I'm clumsy. <laughs> So I probably shouldn't be doing those things. Okay, I got the picture. Perfect. Okay, I'm coming back. Take a picture. Don't run! Oh my god! Okay. Yeah. I'm viewing this gorgeous house for my client, Patrick. So this is actually one of my favorite homes in LA. I mean, there's dual pools, which you definitely do not always get. I don't know why you need two infinity pools, but you know, it's uh, the place of over the top grandeur at Los Angeles real estate. So it's perfect for the show. And fun fact, that house is the house that our season five promo picture is. It's really cool. Not everyone knows that. It's a beautiful house. I think that it also showcases just how, how different the architecture is in Los Angeles than almost anywhere else in the world. People ask me this all the time, like how do they build those houses up on the side of those mountains like that? And they really do take these pieces of land that you would think you couldn't build anything on at all. And it's just kind of crazy that somebody built all that suspended on the side of a mountain like that. And it happened to be my friend's house. So that worked out perfect. And he's an amazing developer. Clearly you can see from his product that he brought to the table and you guys got to take a little peek at that. This is uh, five years in the making. My latest baby, come take a look. Yeah, you know, maybe there's a little cachet in saying that they've been on Selling Sunset. I mean, it, the show does air in 190 countries around the world. And so if, if a builder built it, he wants to show off his craftsmanship, right? And if someone just purchased it, they want to say the bragging rights of saying that that's my home that's on that, that was on that show. 11,500 square feet. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is perfect for my client. You know, when I said I want to do a real estate show, I was like, all right, how can I do this and make it look and feel different than other real estate shows that are out there? And one of the things that we did that was really unusual that people weren't doing at the time was just throwing a drone up inside the house. And it was the first time I think you saw a drone, like you start in the kitchen and you pan out and you go back over the kitchen island and you're back over the dining room table and over the coffee table. And people don't realize it, that yeah, they just think it looks beautiful, but they're like, no, I don't like people put together like how we did it. And since we've been doing Laguna Beach, to be honest with you, back in the day, because that was the first show that we were really going into like 18, 20 million dollar homes. And these people were like, get the F out of here with your tripods and your cameraman and your trucks and your vans. And it's like, you know, it's, a, it's like a crew of 40 people showing up at your house. They're really good. So they come in full bootied up on their feet. And then the cameras actually have tennis ball type things on the bottom of them. So they're really careful. But as you can imagine, as a seller, as a buyer, they want to make sure that the house isn't going to get all scratched up, the floors, the walls, everything. Anytime I ever am on set and the owners are there, they just thank me and are so grateful about how well we treated their home. Unless somebody's not telling me, we have not used our insurance policy in one house yet. Wow, this is... Oh my goodness. I think every season we try to come at it with a different perspective. What did we love from last season? What do we want to see more of from last season? You know, like what don't we want to see of more of that from last season? You know, it's like you can only shoot so many dogs walking down the street and like people with shopping bags, right? And like women in high heels and it gets like a little tiring after a while. So you kind of have to kind of up the game, right? And like, you know, I, I don't want to say that we like started the like getting out of the car shot with the foot, but 
we certainly use it a lot and it's been copied now on every other reality show. And so, you know, we want to stay away from that. Glam is everything to Selling Sunset because Selling Sunset wouldn't be Selling Sunset if we were coming in our workout clothes and sweatpants. Although I love some workout clothes and sweatpants, it is fun to get glammed up. I mean, my glam team is like my family. My makeup artist is actually here outside of my house right now by my pool. That day, um, something fell through and somebody had to cancel. And I got a call last minute um, to kind of, you know, meet with them and do this house. Because with locations, this happens a lot. Um, and so this was one of those days that I didn't have a glam team. I'm kind of throwing myself together. And um, luckily, I had that outfit ready for something that I thought was coming up. And it ended up working out. The only days that we provide glam are on interview days. But when they sit on the sofa and they're talking to the camera, that, that's on our dime. But when they're all the rest of the time, it's all them. I made that decision really early on. When you're day to day, like we're not providing anything because how you dress and what you wear and the bag you carry and the shoes you wear, it all is kind of like a representation of you, right? It's like, it's like your personal style. And so... I don't want to mess with that. I love to get all glammed up and I love to, you know, just have fun with it. Jason, you can see his style change a bit. He recently just hired a stylist so he could up his glam. He's been spending clearly way too much time with us because he's like, oh yeah, I hired a stylist. I was like, oh, look at you. Selling sunsets wearing off on you. <laughs> I'm in love, babe. For now, I feel like things are going really well. We joke about the reality gods. There are people blessing us with some of these stories because we can't make this stuff up. I mean, you know, people think we write these shows and I would have never scripted that. I don't think in a million years if I was writing the show. I would never thought to put that together. Me and Jason, you know, there's definitely those moments where, you know, you walk a, a fine line between being someone's girlfriend and being an employee that has, you know, legitimate complaints against another employee or something like that. You know, those lines obviously got blurred and you know i watch it back and it's not like um i don't think any of us are watching the show from a self-righteous point of view we're watching our mistakes we're watching things we wish we could have done better i am extremely family oriented love my family they come first can't wait to have a family and that's a huge thing that people differ about and it's, it's it can be a deal breaker where are you guys on babies this was one of those situations you know where i'm you know, in a vulnerable position of, of what I, you know, say I want versus, you know, where I'm at and how that can happen. And so I think that that was really scary. That being said, this is something that as women, we really, we go through and we face all the time. And so anytime I have those fears, I, I let my brain kick in and I understand if I'm feeling this way, somebody else feels that way, you know? And I think that that is the power of the platform in sharing it because, you know, Yes, you're going to you're going to hear a lot of criticism that you don't need to hear. But if you're focusing on the women that you actually reach out to you, that's like, hey, I'm really happy you shared this journey like it, you know, then that's actually what makes it worth it, because you really feel like you're forming a collective bond with people that are rooting for you. You know, we're putting our real lives on camera. So those are things that you know, you do have to kind of relive and then you, you move on. So for Kershaw, you know, months later, she moves on a little bit and then all of a sudden you're watching it, you're reliving it and you don't realize how difficult it is to go back to a moment that's, you know, in your past. This has been a very difficult breakup. I think watching the show uh, made it more difficult, you know, brought it back up. I think there was a lot of, a lot of love between us and there still is. And I still care about it very much. Even though we're just, Rewatching it now or seeing it for the first time, we've we're, we've been in a better place. So let's stay in this better place. Let's keep on track and not let this, you know, bring us back to that moment. We've moved on and we have to continue to move on. You know, if I lived a normal life where you're able to have that beginning stages and just kind of figure everything out, you know, you're able to take more time. But because there was such a thing about it not being a cis male that I've dated my whole life, there was going to be a lot of chatter that I, that made me uncomfortable. So I definitely spoke on it sooner than I ever would have spoken on it. That being said, I obviously have no regrets and I'm really happy and I'm good with energy. So obviously we both caught on pretty quickly that it was something meaningful. So, you know, I look at our cast and our crew and I think of us all as one big family and, and we are, like, I think we all respect one another. I would never hire somebody that's going to go in there and be like, ha ha, like, gotcha. Or like, 
made you say this or made you say that. That's just not the way we operate. And all the women on my show know that. And in turn, they give us stuff that I don't know that other reality shows would get. The cameras are catching so many of us in these moments of self-realization and figuring out who we are. And it's not like, you know, a show when reality television started and you're, you're showing teens going through a different stage, you know, we're older women, you know, in careers and, and yet still, you know, you find these things where it's like, okay, she has everything. She has it figured out. And then you get to know us and you realize it doesn't change. I think in the case of Emma, she has no filter whatsoever. So I think you'd have a hard time not getting Emma to say what she's thinking. No, I look back sometimes and I watch it. I'm like, whoo, my dad's probably like, oh my goodness. I don't have the best elevator mojo. You're telling me this now? I'm so As we're in the elevator? Oh, oh my God, is this the... <gasps> we're going into season six. You know, we always look for different homes and different style of homes. I mean, for the most part, the homes that we follow are homes that Jason actually has as his listings. But there's always these big, modern, white, boxy homes. I mean, I think that's just, I think that's what people expect these days. Like it's just in style right now. I don't know what to expect. So there's always that little bit of, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? You know, they've, they've, um, we've got new cast members, new, um, you know, that are now with the O group, one that was before, but that's joining the cast. And, you know, I know that we have some really exciting listings coming up. The real estate that I'm bringing to the show, the, you know, this new season, next level. That's all I can say on that front between, you know, potentially me purchasing things to um, my next level billionaire clients that I have multiple of this season. I'm very excited. Of course, we're going to have to deliver on the real estate. I think that's the one through line, no matter if you love the drama, you hate the drama. We got to always nail the real estate. And it's interesting because we're actually, the market was so hot we're dipping right now. The market is has really cooled. Interest rates are up. And so I think it'll be really interesting to see that on a luxury market, you know, standpoint, how that affects the market. And it, and it really has. So I want the show, I'm hoping, you know, the show really covers that. Definitely going to talk and, and touch a little bit more on, you know, female entrepreneur and everything that I have going on with there, because I know that people watching, I want people to know that you can watch this show and you can see everything that I've accomplished and also being a really good person. Cause I think sometimes you see people on TV and you see these characters and you see, Oh wow, they're on TV, but they're also a villain. And that's cool. It's cool to be mean. It's cool to not do nice things. And so for me, I really, it's really important to send, you know, the message out there to be a kind person. And I think good things will happen to you. And as far as the antics of, you know, the interpersonal relationships, that's all going to need to be fleshed out. So I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm sure it'll make for great television. <laughs>